Does Lewis Hamilton deserve his knighthood? Just a quick little disclaimer ahead of this video, I do realise I'm making it slightly late, about a week sort of time late after the news that Hamilton is on the new New Year's honours list, but with that I am of the opinion that I'm not overly fussed either way, so I decided to collate a couple arguments for and against his knighthood and then come up with my opinion and assess those arguments as well and then see what I overly think at the end of the video. So I'm just popping this disclaimer in at the start as I do say it again at the end but I don't know if many of you are going to reach the end of that video. So with that said, the arguments in this video that I pop up are not of my own, they are taken from Twitter. Enjoy, if you have anything spiteful to say, let me know in the comments below. But with that all said, enjoy the video guys. Hello, my name is Alex Does F1 Stuff and welcome to another one of these slightly, slightly different opinionated videos. Now, I released one of these not too long ago about my Formula 1 2020 predictions and it has done exceptionally well. It has blown up, it is currently the uh, sixth, third, second, second best video on my channel. It is doing really, really well. And as it has sort of influenced the two videos either side, of the very good video, the predictions video, I thought why not give it another bash? And today we are looking at does Lewis Hamilton deserve his knighthood? The opinion of someone who doesn't give a shit. As that is me, I am of the opinion that I don't really care. I'm not overly fussed whether he gets a knighthood or not. I'm not in the camp that thinks he's a king and a god and deserves all these titles, and I'm not in the opinion that are, well, in my personal opinion, are the racist and the hatred people that think he is the scum of the earth. I just sit in the middle and I want to see good racing. So with that in mind, I'm going to look at sort of the arguments in the yes column and definitely the arguments in the no column and see what I make of them. So what exactly is a knighthood? Well, a knighthood is something that was introduced in 1917, issued by the Queen or any other member of the royal family. And it is very, very deeply rooted in the British Empire, as it is simply that title. You are a knight of the British Empire, same as an MBE and an OBE. You're either a member of the member of the British Empire or you're part of the order of the British Empire. It is all deeply, deeply rooted within British colonialism and the empire. However, since we don't have an empire anymore, it's not really anything to do with that. So yeah, it's, it's just an honorary title now, but it definitely has its roots within British colonialism. And there are only 65 people who get knighted each year, both men and women as well. Men will become a sir, insert name, and the women will become dame, insert name. You can choose whether or not you accept the title as well, as 2% of the people who have been offered a knighthood have rejected it, with allegedly David Bowie rejecting it twice in the times that he has been offered it. Or you could be the case of Andy Murray, you can accept the knighthood, but you can ask people not to call you sir, which to me is a little bit pointless, otherwise you would just simply reject the knighthood. You would say I'm eternally grateful for the offer of becoming a knight of the British Empire, but I declined this offer rather than going, yes, I want the knighthood, but don't call me sir. I don't think I deserve it. It seems a bit backhanded to me. So let's take a look at the yes, he does deserve it. The he should be king of all the realms category. So obviously he is absolutely the most successful British Formula One driver, and he has been for a considerably long time, but he is also matched the all-time record in Formula One, and you earn a knighthood for your services to a particular area. Services to music, services to art, to acting, to politics, to engineering, to all sorts, and his is a services to motorsport. And by becoming the all-time most successful driver in Formula One, almost, as he hasn't quite got the championships just yet, then that is 100% deserved of the knighthood. And for Hamilton's services to motorsport, no one comes close. In trying to improve diversity in the sport, his Hamilton commission as well throughout all of this year, persuading Mercedes, albeit probably didn't take much persuading, to paint their car black to turn away from the silver arrows, it is absolutely immense his impact that he has had on the sport. So undoubtedly, his services to motorsport, which is the criteria for a knighthood, he deserves one. Other racing knighthoods are Jackie Stewart and his services to motorsport are also immeasurable due to safety and his safety implementations that came about through the 60s and the 70s, the period where we lost most Formula One drivers during the racing. And that is just, that's also unmatched towards Lewis Hamilton's diversity improvements also. 
So just looking at those two things, the fact he is the most successful British driver ever and on the verge of becoming, hands down, the most successful Formula One driver ever and his immense contributions and services to motorsport, he absolutely deserves this knighthood. And also in this column of yes, he deserves a knighthood, think about all the Olympians in 2012. If you won a gold medal in the sport, you were knighted, regardless of what else you did for your services to sport. And think they also got gold post boxes as well in the area where they grew up. And just think, we've had Lewis Hamilton, the king of Formula One, the king of British Formula One. And yet he's had no sort of recognition apart from a couple bits and bobs, a couple sports personality of the years as well, which again, so many people disagreed with, but we'll get onto those in the no, he doesn't column. So in my personal opinion, if all the Olympians who won a gold medal get a knighthood, 100% Lewis Hamilton is in that deserved column and he 100% deserves it, along with all the other reasons I've just listed. His services to motorsport are unparalleled in this day and age and the fact that we have a Briton at the top of Formula One, the pinnacle of motor racing. That is just awesome and that is fully, fully deserved of a knighthood. However, there is of course the column of no, he doesn't deserve it. He's a tax exile who wins in the best car. So there are a few arguments that I've always seen popping up in Twitter, whether it's to do with his knighthood, whether it's to do with the sports personality of the year, or whether it's just genuine arguments against Lewis Hamilton under any old Twitter post. Personally, I am of the opinion that I dislike both extremes of any argument, regardless of what this argument is about. The people who are feverently for somebody, the hardcore fans that in my opinion are so far up that person's ass that they cannot see. And then I also despise the people that are just so feverently hated towards that person. They have a genuine hatred. Those two sets of people are also the most vocal, especially on Twitter. And that is what I dislike so strongly about things like this, but we will move on in to some articles and some points about why he doesn't deserve a knighthood. Now, my first one is he hasn't actually retired yet, and he's still currently active. Personally, even if he deserves one, which I've already covered in the yes column, I would have liked to have seen it after he retired. It's very similar to when the Hamilton Strait or Silverstone renamed a part on the Silverstone circuit, the Hamilton Strait. In my opinion, that should be a recognition of someone's achievement after they have retired, especially the uh, knighthood for Lewis Hamilton. I feel it would have been better to come once he retired. But saying that, we can apply it back to the Olympians in my yes column. They're still active. Andy Murray is still active as well. So that argument, I suppose, gets thrown out of the window. But it is something that I would have liked to have seen. And now the big one that I always see on Twitter. He doesn't pay tax lies. He does pay British tax. So yes, Lewis Hamilton does currently reside in Monaco and therefore he has no income tax on the majority of his salary, which is roughly round numbers will say 50 million. Whereas if he was residing in the UK, he would have to pay the full 45% income tax rate in the UK. And if you are earning roughly 50 million a year, you would 100% clear out of the UK. However, to say that Lewis Hamilton does not pay tax is completely false. Doesn't matter if he lives in the UK or not. He has multiple, multiple revenue streams from different sponsorships, different places where he races and things like that. And he pays the appropriate taxes in each of those countries. And Britain is one of those. So of the revenue streams that are coming to him from Britain, he will pay the appropriate 45% income tax on those earnings. And that has put him in the top 5,000 taxpayers of 2019. According to HMRC, the people that literally deal, the government body that deal with taxes. And there are still people that refute this evidence and I don't understand it. Literally HMRC, the governing body that deal with taxes said it and they still don't accept it. So yes, you could argue that he doesn't contribute enough to Britain as he moved away, but you can also understand 100% why 
he moved away because the tax rates here are so ludicrously high. And if you are earning those big millions, you would want to leave. I don't care who you are. You wouldn't want to stay in a place that's going to charge you 45% tax when you can happily move to a place that's going to charge you none. And you can rake in all of your millions rather than just less than half. So I don't care who you are or what your status is, if you were in that position, you would do exactly the same. Now, the other one in the column of no, he doesn't deserve a knighthood is the fact he doesn't live in the UK. Now, this one to me is just pathetic. It doesn't need to be an argument. You have to just be a British citizen to be eligible for a knighthood. Apart from the few that are non-British citizens that end up with an honorary knighthood, which is... It holds the same weighting as they don't really have much of an impact nowadays as they did when we did have the British Empire, but now it is simply a title, whereas a British citizen will receive a full knighthood, whereas a non-British citizen can receive an honorary knighthood. But to say that he doesn't deserve one because he doesn't live in the UK is just stupid. Utterly, utterly stupid. Picture Stewart, the other Formula One driver to have a knighthood. He currently resides in Switzerland. He doesn't live in the UK. And also Switzerland is another tax haven, just like Monaco. Picture Nigel Mansell as well. Jim Clark, they all live away. Or Jim Clark used to live in Monaco. Button lives in Monaco as well. There are so many examples of Formula One drivers that don't live in the UK. Yes, they don't have the prestigious uh, like knighthoods, but they still have OBEs and MBEs, etc, etc. And not to mention the fact that there are other knighthoods and dames as well that live outside of the UK. James Dyson just recently sold his Singapore penthouse for something like $13 million. He wasn't residing in the UK. He moved all of his stuff outside of the UK because it was cheaper. He left the UK. He has since come back after selling his Singapore penthouse. He now lives in Gloucestershire, but he definitely lived in Singapore for a little while. We have people like Helen Mirren. We've got Anthony Hopkins. They all live outside of the UK, yet they have been knighted. So this argument that he doesn't deserve one because he doesn't live in the UK is again pointless. And there we go, that is my review of does Lewis Hamilton deserve his knighthood? And for someone who doesn't really care either way, yes, he fully deserves his knighthood as well because the arguments for massively, massively outweigh the arguments against. Personally, the arguments against are just people that are filled with hatred. I don't really want to call them all racist, but there are definitely some people that are and it is not great to see that. It's it's just really not great to see that still in 2021. So the arguments against, they're just a bit pathetic. The arguments for are absolutely strong and solid. Now, if you have disagreed with anything that I've said, please let me know down in the comments below. If you want to be spiteful slash hurtful, go for it. I'll probably just ignore the comment. I might respond or I might pin it. I don't know. But do remember, I've come at this from a neutral angle as I really, really couldn't care less if Lewis Hamilton receives a knighthood. I'm British. I don't care. I'm a fan of Formula One. I have said multiple times that I am not a fan of any one driver or any one team. I am more a fan of the sport and the spectacle as a whole and especially, especially the data that comes with it as that is primarily what this channel is about. However, these types of videos seem to do exceptionally well, especially the F1 predictions video, which is my second best video on this channel. But like I said, if you've disagreed with anything that I've said, let me know down in the comments below and I'll make sure to respond with that. If you've got any suggestions for future topical videos like this that you'd like me to discuss my opinions of, then please let me know as well. Or if it is any factual statistical video ideas that you would also like me to see turn into a video. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next episode with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.